why it is important that I close the blinds is if uh, if I don't, the sunshine from outside, because it's sunny today, will uh, go on the green screen behind me and uh, make weird spots and it bothers me. Hello and welcome to Live Coding with me, Rachel. Hopefully that's what you thought you were signing up for. Uh, oh, where's YouTube? Hmm. I'll wait for YouTube real quick. There's YouTube. Excellent. Hi, welcome. Today, we're going to be continuing to work on uh, a project that we've been working on for a while, which looks like the stream is reconnected now. Hopefully, y'all again. This bodes well. Uh, the last, maybe like, two months? Uh, internet's been a little bit rockier because I, uh, I work from home and now other people are also working from home, which is fantastic, but we are straining the internet resources a little bit. So hence the more disconnections, my apologies. Right now we have an assistant and what the assistant does is it gives you the quiz which is good. Uh, I'm running the quiz using an action server. It serves a uh, classifier. We're using XGBoost right now. And when the quiz is done running, it tells you nonsense answers. So what we discovered once the assistant was finished and we were testing it before, um, before we shared it with humans, because you want to make sure your prototype actually works. You're not just wasting people's time before you start to uh, give it to your testers was that we were getting just ridiculous answers, um, which it's fairly easy for me to tell because I, I have a background specifically in dialectology and some of my formal education. Some water. Um, and I reached out to Bert Vox, who kindly provided the data in the first place and asked if we could get access to a data dictionary because my guess was that we had uh, incorrectly uh, done the label decoding to begin with. So the original data we got was, I don't think we can open it because I think it's too big, uh, had all of the responses in That's fantastic. One sec. Just gonna real quickly. Oh, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any cards up, so I'm just gonna make this small, I guess, <laughs> and drag it over and fucks around in my file system real quick. Um, so the point that I'm trying to make here is that we ran into problems. Uh, where the um, the quiz was doing random things. It was not doing the correct answer. And the reason for that was that when I got the answers as numbers and I went through and I converted them to words, I did it wrong. Um, I made some assumptions that it turned out were incorrect. Uh, and so in order to uh, documents, yeah. Uh, so in order to correctly, uh, there we go, now we're in the right folder. In order to correctly do the classification, we have to make sure that we have the, now what I did not do was actually set this as a working directory. There we go. Um, go back and, and do it with the correct encoding. Uh, hi, Scott. Uh, and in order to do that, I reached out to Bert and I got uh, a different version of the data set that had the data dictionary with it, so what all the values meant. Um, and it's different enough that we're gonna have to go through and completely retrain our classifier. Hopefully it's not gonna be super difficult because we um, commented our code and uh, we're working from the original data cleaning that we did right now to try and get the um, large data file which we should be able to now take a look at since we are in the right uh, directory. There we go. 
Um, yeah, so the original uh, data set looks like this. You have the user ID, the question number, and we know which question that is thanks to the other files in here. Uh, specifically, I believe the choices.txt file. And then the answer that that particular participant gave, which is a number. I want it to be a word because when the users are taking the dialect quiz through the assistant, it's going to be a word that they input and not a number. Uh, uh, hello, hello on earth. So what we started working on last Wednesday, I had a long weekend, so I'm a little bit, oh, uh, a little bit out of the flow of things, uh, was we started working on taking the actual text of the responses and turning these numbers into A, just the questions that we want, and B, the responses here, instead of being numbers, being words, and then we're going to, I know this seems convoluted, but we're going to convert them back into numbers. We're going to save the, um, the encoder that we use to convert that. And then when the participant gives their responses, we'll use the same encoder to turn their words into the same numbers so the classifier knows how to handle it. Um, and the big problem that we had is that that original step when we did it, taking this these data that were numbers and turning them into words, um, we... Uh, <laughs> use this the wrong word to number mapping as it were um, and as a result uh, got nothing helpful out of our classifier so that's where we are right now um, and if I remember correctly correctly uh, we got pretty far what was that error message external vector I, I trust the tidyverse warning messages implicitly. Uh, all right. Oh, I see what they're talking about here. So here we have a function where one of the arguments is target question. I have a, uh, a vector outside of the function called target question. Um, Hello on says, what errors did it produce? Like one, one instead of 11. No. So what it, the errors were that, um, it was one of those tricky machine learning things where everything looked right, you know? Um, so I got answers out, but the answers were wrong. So if I filled out the quiz, I think it said that the cities that I sounded like I was from were New York, um, I think like Miami and like Houston. No, not Houston. It would have been something even less. I forget what the third one was. Um, when, whereas when I take the New York Times dialect quiz, the top three cities I get are Richmond, Newport News, both in Virginia, and then uh, I think Kansas City I usually get, um, which is in Missouri, which makes sense because that's where my mom's from. Um, so that is more what I'm expecting, like answers that make sense. Um, I am very much not from New York City, which I believe was the top one, and also very much not from Miami. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being from those places, but I for sure do not talk like a New Yorker. Um, uh, hello. Mm, cluster being unreachable um, was because I had closed and then reopened the VM. And when you do that, you need to manually reconnect to cube control, which I didn't know because I didn't, I didn't do because I didn't know that I had to do it. Um, but thankfully, someone from the engineering team um, this morning was able to, to fix that uh, or to, to specify, figure out that that was the specific problem I was running into. So thank you, Tomas. Uh, I don't think it was Tomas, I think it was Tobias. Uh, what am I doing? Coffee. Oh, love that the stream is flickering. That's great. Uh, Joao says, this is a bit out of topic, but does Raza built in two stage fallback policy work without buttons using a firm deny tense instead? I can't seem to find any solution online. I don't know. I also don't know why they're choosing to leaf flow. Um, yeah, I would ask on the forums. I think uh, you'll have better luck with an answer there. Also, I have a number of forum questions I need to go through and answer, and hopefully I'll do that today. Ugh, but I'm prepping a talk for tomorrow, so probably I'll finish the talk first. It's uh, for Hyderabad Women in Machine Learning and Data Science, and it'll be online. So if any of you want to come, you're very welcome to. 
and it'll be it an hour earlier than this stream, so eight my time. <sighs> All right, so I believe the problem. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so what we did last week was we got to the point where we were using the information from the data dictionary to take the numeric input and turn it into text input. Uh, and then we did that for all of them. And then when we check empty data frame, which is a wrong. Mm. <laughs> and then when we checked empty data frame, we ended up with um, a lot of these columns that our string is factors for. I know why that is. So you, um, you see here how we have new column and then string is factors false. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am binding column wise. So I'm adding columns uh, with the empty data frame, I don't think I need the I here actually. Uh, yeah, with the empty data frame, then the new column that I've created, and then a new, another new column called string as factors, which is false. And I don't think I actually need string as factors false. All right, let's try this again. All right, and then we should, if we looked at empty data frame, we should just see a uh, data frame that we're happy with. Yeah, okay, well, excellent. We have absolutely uh, fixed one of the problems, which was that we were adding a column called string as factors um, that just had false in it. So that's wrong. That was a silly thing that we did. Uh, okay, that was easy to fix. The other thing that is harder to fix is when we were putting the quiz together, um, I went through by hand and looked at the questions in the original New York Times dialect quiz and picked out the ones that I thought would work well for a chatbot. Um, and eventually I'd like this to be a voice assistant, so I also removed the pronunciation ones um, where you had to like say the sound with the exception of uh, lawyer, lawyer. Uh, and that's what's in this question key CSV. And in this question key CSV, I have the uh, the name of the slot in my assistant. I know that this isn't being parsed as a as a you know spreadsheet, but it is one. Uh, and you're very welcome, Joanne. Uh, and then the text of the question, as it appears originally, I believe, um, although it looks like the text of the question in this data set that we have is different from the text of the question in the original quiz. So that's another fun little wrinkle we got. Uh, and then the number of the question, and then all of the answers to the question uh, in order from the dialect quiz, the original survey that collected the answers website. And uh, it looks like this uh, key is wrong. So uh, one example of how I know that it's wrong is that we have, um, where is it? Here, so one of these questions is about whether a casket and a coffin are the same thing, or like what you would call, I guess, like the casket in an open casket. Um, uh, sorry for death mentions, but it's unavoidable right now. Uh, and there, that's not a question that was in the quiz when I, when I went through and picked the questions that I wanted to be in the quiz. So it looks like to my delight, um, we have to go through and redo the uh, it looks like we have to go through and redo the bit where we figure out what the number of the question is because it is not the same here as it was in the original Harvard dialect survey. Um, which also, to be fair, could be part of what the problem was originally because uh, we just got, did we get the text of the questions? I don't think we did. I think we just got, um, in the original data set, I'm pretty sure it was user ID, 
zip code, city, state, question, and then the questions were in this form, and then the number of the answer that that participant had given. Um, so that also could be part of our, our problem here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kamesh says, sorry for jumping into the wagon out of nowhere. Oh, no worries. Is this a continuation of the dialect bot you started a few months ago? Sure is. Um, I'm really only working on it on stream, so uh, it's going much more slowly than it would if I was working on it full time. It'd probably be a couple week project if I was working on it full time, and mostly it's this this classification portion. Uh, Yusuf needs my help. Yeah, I'd, maybe I can help. Okay, so. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think we're gonna have to go through and do these by hand. I would prefer not to. Hopefully it'll be quick because it's just sort of like data validation, but I think it's gonna be actually not that fast. Um, choices, right? This is the one, can I, can I pop you out? No. Uh, reload, inspect element. I'm trying to see if there's another, um, if anyone's familiar with RStudio, please let me know so we can uh, get multiple ones here. Mystery connections, list of board data. I don't want to futz with my uh, setup too lot, too much. Um, Yosef wants to know if they should do the UML work or not. I don't, I don't know what UML work is. Um, sorry. I guess may, may, maybe not. <laughs> sorry, again, I, I just, I don't know what UML is. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Is it questions.txt? Oh. All right, yeah. Um, so, woof. Okay, so questions.txt is um, uh, the shorthand for the question. And then uh, whether it allows other, whether it allows comment, and then image, which it looks like is just always empty. So there's an empty column called image. And it looks like this is the question ID. Uh, Kamesh says, I'll catch up with the other videos later. Oh, you you do not have to, there's a lot of them. Um, can you list them all in the description of each live stream? It would just be easier to keep track of the whole content. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so they're all in a um, playlist called Live Coding on the Raza channel. So if you go to like the little playlist tab at the top and click into that, it's it's one of them and they should be in order. And I think it has all of them. Uh, yeah. The last value in Centaur. Ah, I guess. Ah. Centaur. Centaur. Ah. 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 I don't know exactly what vowel I use there. It's definitely low back. Centaur. Ah, 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 centaur, centaur. I think I use around a day. That's in uh, IPA symbol. I think I use the like, well, maybe I don't, <laughs> but I think that's what I do. Okay. So I'm going to open up File Explorer. Let's see. Um, and see if I can boop -boo -boo, open up the, uh, yeah, I just want to open up a, a, like a notepad with the other uh, file that we want in it, which is the question key, I believe. Uh, Rachel, have you spent the majority of this chatbot project on data cleaning? You know it. <laughs> I absolutely have. That has been 
far and away the single most time consuming part of this project, which I guess like it has a machine learning component, so not surprising at all. Um, but I do feel a little bit like uh, I just haven't spent that much time working on the, uh, uh, so I'm trying to remember what the thing I'm called, question key, question key. Um, yeah, so I feel like I haven't spent that much time, as much time working on the, you know, actual, uh, okay, let's pop that away. There we go. Uh, I feel like I just haven't spent as much time working on the actual chat bot because it just sort of like worked good, which is nice, right? Uh, and this is, I'm sure, way too small for y'all to see. So let's do that. All right, so let's go through and look at the questions. Uh, and see if we can find them. So question 050, second person plural, is that correct? Yes, the first one is correct. Do you pronounce caught and caught the same? Question 28, that one's correct. What do you call it when rain falls or the sun is shining? 80, and I did check these and I checked the first couple and I was like, that sounds right. That one's correct. Uh, question 66, what do you call the miniature lobster? Correct. Question 110. What do you call the night before Halloween? Correct. Question 64. <laughs> Sorry, a uh, long sandwich. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, I think my dad says hoagie. And then my mind was like, Hulk hoagie. <laughs> Hulk Hogan is a, is a professional wrestler. <laughs> that's, just, that's just dumb. Um, Oh, Yusuf says, uh, UML is unified modeling language. It's used for designing the project, diagrams, and stuff like that. UML offers a way to visualize a system's architectural blueprints in a diagram. Oh, um, I think I have seen that. I would say, it, so based on the brief background that you've given me, I would say that you probably would if you are using a state machine-based uh, chatbot. So if you had... Um, a chatbot where you sort of mapped all the possible conversational flows, well, the conversational flows you thought were possible, and then the, the paths through them, then I'd say probably yes, that would be useful. Um, that is not the way that Raza works. So I'd say it would probably be less useful if you're talking about like the flow of conversation. Um, and our sort of general design philosophy is that you start with um, sort of your, your MVP, your minimum viable product MVP, CV, minimum <laughs> viable chatbot. Uh, and then as soon as possible, you get it in front of people, um, your, your testing population, and then their conversations will be folded back in and used to improve the chatbot. So I think it's less important to spend a lot of time um, designing a diagram of your whole system and more important to spend more time, uh, you know, collecting data, annotating data, um, our, our recommendation is that by the time you launch your chatbot, 90% of your training data should come from actual test users and only 10% of it should be like the initial seed data that you create. So that's my, my answer. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, Scott says, I'm new to Raza. Can you tell me the difference between the Raza legacy version and the latest version? Um, so the biggest difference is that the legacy version was split into core and NLU. Uh, and the new version, those have been um, sort of combined to Raza open source. Uh, and the newer versions have a lot more of our sort of research applied in them. So I don't think TED is available in, uh, in the legacy version. That's a dialogue policy that uses transformers and is really good at sort of um, identifying digressions. Like we're talking about like this, <laughs> instead of talking about coding right now, I'm talking about um, the TED policy and being like, okay, once that's done, and then you go back to the main thread of the conversation, picking it up well. Um, and uh, eventually we're sort of moving away from using intense at all. Um, there's there's a lot of, some blog posts about it if you're interested in, in learning more about that. Um, and uh, in that case, you know, Raza legacy will be, you know, very different from, from the current Raza. Hopefully that helps. I think those are probably the, the most salient differences. <laughs> okay, uh, where was I up to? Oh yeah, Hulk Hoagie. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been inside for a long time, y'all. <laughs> 
Is it reconnected? Reconnected? Okay, yeah, excellent. How about YouTube? Is YouTube reconnected? Hmm. Looks like maybe not. Oh no, okay, YouTube is good. Whew, okay, excellent. Ugh. Connection issues. Okay, uh, where were we looking at? So we're still looking at the questions and making sure that numbers are right. We found that the access road frontage road one was not right, so we fixed that. Uh, rubber sold shoes, Q073. That's what we had there. Yep, that's correct. Uh, in general terms, so people not, aren't like Jordans, like what do you call the class of things? Uh, big road, Q79. Yes, that one's correct. Uh, Q58. Yep, that one's correct. Uh, Q0107, which I think is probably correct. Yes. Q094. Yes. Q014. <laughs> mm hmm. Also, I really love how some of these are just one word and the rest are like the full question. Uh, I've spent a lot of time looking at this quiz though, so I'm pretty good at disambiguating, hopefully. Uh, Q76, but I think it's right, because I think I saw that in the, the cleaned data. Yes, correct, we, it did. Uh, lightning bug, 65. 65, yep, that's right. Uh, 60, yep, The Verge, drive through liquor store, 118. Uh, this is the... Um, uh, this is the most distinctive dialect marker for me in particular. Yeah, uh, I would call it a brew through. Da, da, da. Drink water from 103. Yep, and then Q74. <laughs> Yes, all right, excellent. Okay, so it looks like it was just uh, just one answer, which is good. Did they, did that save? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Good news, I'm in a bad state. Uh, yeah, uh, Yusuf says, uh, thank you, it did help. Okay, excellent. All right. I'm just gonna copy that, just real quick. Have I done the bad thing, right? And then if I do this, Nope, that's not gonna work because uh, it's removed all of my commas. So that's good. Uh, but what I can do is 99 is the correct one for the side road. Yeah, all right. Okay, so now, hopefully if we go through and do the uh, data cleaning just one more time, we should not see anything about caskets, which is honestly my general preference for a state of the world. Ooh, I made it big. Uh, <laughs> uh, McGaming says, uh, it's not 92, 99, it's 42. Yeah, we, we just checked it as 99, but thank you for the input. Uh, and McGaming says Windows, yup. Uh, which we're running a developer survey right now for Raza developers, which if you're watching this, you count. Um, we really appreciate it if you take it. Um, and what we found is that Windows is the second most common operating system that Raza developers work on. So uh, it's not just me. <laughs> uh, a lot of us, a lot of us use Windows. Hi, Andre. Okay, so. 
let's check out empty data frame, but I should really call something different. Uh, let's call this cleaned data frame. No, let's call it decoded DF. Yeah. man okay yeah 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 uh let's do uh so uh the thing is here that we have instead of a data frame i've selected a single vector um because everything everything in r is a vector a little little r less everything is r in effect in r is a vector and uh data frames are just sets of vectors of the same length next to each other basically um, which is also true in Python, specifically about data frames. So data frames as a data format come from R um, and were ported in. Probably technically they come from S, okay? I've never used S, I just sort of know that it exists. It's like the grandpa you never met. I mean, can you explain what the machine will do? So eventually we will have a classifier that takes in um, somebody's answers to a quiz, uh, converts those text answers to numbers, uh, runs a you know a machine learning classifier on it that's been trained on a bunch of other people's answers and returns uh, an output that is, in our particular case, the city in the US where the person sounds like they are most likely to be from based on these different words that they use and the way that they pronounce things. Uh, how do you convert something to a data frame in R? Um, but right now we are, we are doing the preparation for the data to train the classifier to use the classifier. Because we have a trained classifier that gives wrong answers, which is not helpful. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I guess it could be like a fun quiz, like this bot will tell you where you're not from. <laughs> It'll be absolutely wrong. Um, I, I don't think I'd, I'd take that. Mm. Can I just cast it as a data frame like so? So I have a vector, I'm trying to cast it as a data frame. Is that gonna work? Oh, data frame is deprecated. Tibble. Yes, I see how that could be. I do not, in fact, want the head of this. I want uh, the whole thing. All right, let's start from the top. Data frame, one column. We're gonna bind a bunch of empty columns and then, uh, sorry, columns that are not empty and then we're gonna rename them and then we should be able to see that all of our numbers have been converted into words. Nope. Hmm. Uh. You're on YouTube too. Yeah, I'm on, uh, right now I'm streaming to the Raza YouTube channel, R-A-S-A, -A, uh, which is the framework that I'm using to build this assistant. Uh, hi, Ravi. And it's open source, so you're welcome to code along if you'd like to. I mean, I'd probably wait until the data was clean. <laughs> Although I will say, I'm not gonna be able to share the data. I don't have permission to do that, but I do have permission to share the trained model, so. Hmm. <sighs> What have I done? Uh, Man says, any specific reason you chose R? So I am uh, manipulating tabular data. 
uh, and I have a strong preference for R for that. Unless it's really big, in which case I'm probably going to prefer SQL. Um, but there's actually some really nice R SQL connections. Uh, Pandas, I find uh, it just doesn't have the same number of really cool helper libraries around it that just like improve quality of life for data cleaning specifically. Um, and the, the R um, ecosystem is, I mean, it's designed for and by data scientists and statisticians. So um, if there's something that you want to do in terms of data manipulation, somebody has absolutely already written a library to do it. And it's very easy to use and well documented, um, which I love about the R community. So that's the reason. You could do this in pandas. Um, I would probably just find it much harder. So what's up with Dakota DF? All right, and then what's the dimensions of selected raw responses? Is that where we're getting the dimension mismatch? No, that's right. Okay. All right. All right, so this is I is the name of the response, which. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so the name of the response should work. And then selected raw responses. Here we're getting the head. Yeah, that should work. And then choices. Choices. Yeah, that should work. Uh, so let's take a little peek at new call, just see what that looks like. Mm hmm. Yep, no, that's correct. And then we're having a problem here with. We're not binding it to the right data frame. We should be recursively bind rebinding it to the same data frames we're adding columns. Also, don't do this. <laughs> Speaking of R, uh, this is um, both time and compute intensive, but we're only doing it, sorry, time and memory intensive. It's the compute's not bad. Uh, but we're only doing it once, so do, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, do not do it scale. It, it does not scale well. Um, I'm, I think it's like polynomial time. Like it's pretty bad if your data gets too big. Uh, Enrique says, uh, as matrix, not really an R expert either. Um, a matrix will only hold numeric variables, I believe, variables, I believe, and I want it to hold text here. So I think a data frame was probably the right choice. Uh, uh, Kuldeep says, does Rasa store the conversation and learn from it? So. That's a good question. So if you are using um, Raza X, depending on how you have Raza uh, open source set up, it might do that as well. Um, you do have an option to store conversation histories. Um, and in order to learn from it, what you would need to do is go through and review the conversations and say, this one went well, this one went badly, um, we need to fix something, re-annotate data. So maybe if an entity was uh, mistagged, identify that, fix that, um, and then retrain. And a big sort of our ethos at Raza is continuous integration, CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment. So as you add additional data, as you update your stories, as you maybe add a new entity, um, you retrain your model and immediately deploy that model. And then your users are interacting with that model with no downtime. And um, obviously you're doing this with versioning. So if the new model turns out to be worse, you can go back to the old model and then you know continue to retrain and improve. Um, so yes, absolutely. Raza assistants improve over time, but there is, you know, the hands-on uh, aspect to that where you are doing the the evaluation so um yeah Ravi says see needs the same dimension data frame uh yeah i think we're good i think the problem is that i renamed um this was called empty df i renamed it to decoded df except not here when we are adding it to itself so hmm. uh Kuldeep says how can i view the database file uh the easiest way is to do it on raza x and we have a nice little Uh, nice little flow for this. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this is gonna be a weird size. Make big, there we go. Uh, let's see if I can find, do we have screenshots in here? Here we go, reviewing conversations. Um, so in Raza X, you can see all of your conversations in this nice little UI, uh, filter them, go through, and then do your tagging very quickly. We've, we've tried to design it to be as user friendly as possible. Um, and, um, accessible to, to people who maybe wouldn't be super comfortable with the, the coding portion. So, um, you can, you can sort by the different actions, um, intents, entities, channels. So if you have like a Facebook connector and a Slack connector and a Google Hangouts connector and a Telegram connector, I'm just listing platforms right now. Uh, you can go through and filter by channels. So, um, yeah, this is probably the, the easiest way to do that. And the sort of the general flow is you get your assistant working on Raza X, um, sorry, in Raza open source, which is what we're doing now. I mean, right now we're fixing our classifier. Um, so you have your assistant and it's working and then you deploy it with Raza X, you give it to test users, they use it uh, and you use their responses to help improve the assistant and then you do CICD. Once it's at a point where um, it's pretty stable, people are usually getting good interactions, your tests are running well, then you launch it. That's sort of the, the development process for Raza. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'm also talking about this in my talk tomorrow, so I'm, I'm primed and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cropwork says, long time no see. Are the birds still fighting? They aren't. I think, uh, I think it was probably like um, sparrow mating season and there was like a little bit of like dominance. Uh, and I think that they are now nesting. So yeah. Uh, and somebody asked why I don't use Julia. Um, I mean, same ecosystem thing. Uh, if I see that I can do the things that I can do easily in uh, in R in Julia, I'd consider it because I definitely faster, definitely more memory efficient. I appreciate that. It is a more modern language. R is about as old as I am, maybe a little bit older. A little bit older. Yeah, okay. So at this point, we should have our decoded data frame with all the correct uh, questions in it, which is great. Um, yeah, the other thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is the ratio of answers. Um, so for this one, the wolf is giving birth is a super common answer. Monkey's wedding is a super common answer. I don't think they're actually that common. Uh, let me see if I can find the Harvard dialect survey data. That'll be a good like normative uh, thing. Uh, Grace Onyx said, how did you get into streaming? Sorry if it's a off topic. Dialect survey. That's a good cue. It was a while ago. It was like two-ish years ago. Um, at that point, I was uh, at Kaggle and I wanted to um, help people. Sorry, this is not what I thought that this would look like. Uh, so I, I'm visiting a site that I visited before that has the dialect survey stuff on it. And that's not, that's not what it used to look like. Oh, it seems like that thing happened where a linguistics department got subsumed into all of the languages. Uh, and I wanted to help people use our notebook format that we had. And uh, I started with streaming. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, looks like it's all redirecting. Oh no. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're getting some this site can't be reached errors. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. These sites look used to look different. Um now it's just redirecting to this UW Milwaukee uh, language site and I can't get the normative results. Mm. Oh no, <laughs> they were there like two weeks ago because I looked at them and was like, oh, we can do this on stream and we can't because they're gone. <sighs> Oh, way back machine. Maybe we can, <laughs> hopefully we can. Yikes. All right, let's 
So copy the link address. I'm just doing this in a um, All right, let's see. We got the Wayback Machine up. Uh, where are we now? We are in May, so let's see, maybe May 9th. Let's see if we can do that one. Whew. Okay, I'm not, I'm not uh, confused or incorrect. These were, in fact, here. What's the 9th? Like a couple weeks ago, and they aren't anymore, so. That's scary. Um, what was the question number for that? The wolf is giving birth, the wolf is giving birth, other one. One second, we can find this out on the summary. Scroll, 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 scroll. Nope, that's not gonna work. Uh, Nope, that's the season. Summary, there we go. Yep, that's because it's case sensitive. What? Invalid substring arguments, okay. Um, all I wanted to know was the question number for the uh, raining and rain sun 80 is the question number. Okay. All right. So, um, I was absolutely right to be worried. So if we look at the proportion of answers here, um, you can see that the most common answer is sun shower which was given by 34%. And the wolf is giving birth was only uh, given by less than half of a percent of respondents. That's a dark blue, where's that from? Uh, in this area, so somebody in Oklahoma, somebody in, pretty sure that's Wisconsin. That one's Illinois. Is that Ohio? I think that's Ohio. Pretty sure that's Ohio. I know Ohio touches Michigan. Uh, it's Kentucky. That's Pennsylvania. Hmm. There's a lot of states. Um, and these are the U.S. states. <sighs> Something's up. Also, just like a lot of different, uh, different things, but it looks like the most common is I don't have a term or expression for this, which I don't think I do either. I've heard mackerel skies, but I think that means when like the sky is the color of a mackerel, so sort of silvery. So our problem is this. We know well, actually, you know what? We don't know that. We don't know that. So let's just really quickly, I was going to say we know that the most common answer is a very rare answer, but it could be that that is not the, uh, let's see what the column names of decoded DF are. It's called, is it underscore names? Maybe it's just names. Used to be better at R. Uh, no, okay. That's not helpful. So what time is it? 951, okay. We know that the, it looks like, given that there were like five, one, two, three, four total responses of the wolf is giving birth in the original data. Uh, and now when we look at this uh, output, we can see uh, four within the first five answers, which is not right. Like this is wrong. This mapping of numbers to answers is wrong. So we messed up somewhere. And this is the same way that we messed up originally, which gave us the weird answers to the dialect quiz to begin with. Uh, Robbie says, where's Virginia? Oh, I got you. Virginia is right here. It's the triangle shaped one. <laughs> Zoom in. Uh, and then DC is like right above it. And then that's Maryland. And that's West Virginia. 
Uh, those ones I know real good. Uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, uh, Robbie says you can edit it in the data frame. I mean, I can, but the bigger problem is that I need to know what the correct mapping of answer of number to text is for every single one of these. So it's not the fact that I can edit it that's the problem, it's the fact that I don't know the relationship between the words and the numbers correctly, and I know that I don't know. <sighs> All right, um, so let's just real quick, go back down to the bottom. Let's just look at, what are my column names? Do I have any column names? I don't. Okay, what are column names for target questions? Because I think that's going to be important to know as well. They ain't none. Okay, that explains a lot. All right, what does target questions look like? Ah, I see. Okay, so what I need to do is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need to replace it with target questions instead, and that should be no problem. And the reason that this is weird is because uh, I did things slightly different uh, now than I did last time. That ain't right. That ain't right. Hmm. So one of them should be user ID. The first one, in fact, should be user ID. Uh, so let me do that in first. So I'm just adding uh, target questions as a vector, uh, and I'm just adding a new item at the beginning of the vector. So you can see that. Hmm. Fifty-nine, fifty, fifty-eight, sixty, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-three, sixty-four. I'm just uh, double checking real quick to make sure we haven't deleted anything. Accidentally, looks like we have not. But this is still going to be wrong. Yep. So we have one more. How? We have one more question in our decoded DF than we do in our target DF. Mm, I see. Uh, so instead of getting the names, we should probably just use the list of names that we already have. Uh, and hopefully these should be the same length. No, it's worse. Ah, all right. Let's run them all and then see what it looks like. Data cleaning. Uh, yeah, Robbie says, I know Virginia. You're from Virginia. I am from Virginia. It is uh, a good state. I miss it sometimes. I don't miss the weather. Ooh, <laughs> it gets real hot. Not as hot as it gets in like Georgia, but still pretty warm. For those of you in centigrade, um, it's usually in the 30s all summer. <sighs> okay. Yeah, excellent. So my question is, raw responses, selected raw responses, target question. How, User ID, target question. Ah, ah, gotcha. Okay, so the thing that we were doing, the reason that we had an extra column is that we added user ID as the first column when we created our data frame. And then we went through the selected raw responses and I used the names of the selected raw responses, which includes this user ID name which we don't need because we already had it. So we, we double dipped on the user ID, which is why it was weird. Okay, excellent, that's helpful. Um, so, which allows me to 
do a summary of Dakota DF, which is what I wanted to do all along. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. So I was looking for, uh, 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 uh. so basically we're just doing data validation. Okay, so what we can see here is um, for this question, the most common answer should be I have no term or expression for that. And instead, that is the like, least common answer. Something's wrong. Something is not correct here. Um, and you can see the wolf is giving birth is said to be the second most common thing when it should not be at all. Um, let's try another one and see if we can get it a little bit better. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's check out question 99, right? Because we've already had some questions with that. Thank heavens for the Internet Archive. This would be impossible without them. So this data set has a service road and then access road being the most common and the most common is service road followed by frontage road, which it looks like is not included here. Let's see, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight answers. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Including NAs. <laughs> Very mysterious. All right, let's check out that because we're right next to it. So the most common answer should be water fountain. And it is instead other. So this one is probably water fountain, actually. And this one is probably drinking faction fountain, actually. So based on the ones that we've looked at, our mapping is still 100% wrong. <laughs> Yikes, okay. This seems like a problem for future Rachel maybe. Um, the other thing that's concerning is the difference in number of answers, right? Like here we have five potential answers and we have five potential answers plus the NAs, so that's not too bad. Uh, but for this service road question, we had fewer than the number of answers, right? We have fewer data points than the number of answers. So our ability to map to a specific answer is going to be Reduced, because we don't have all of them. So where's the problem? The problem is probably in the, uh, which is the, it's probably in the choices file, right? So let's check it out. So we're looking at 103. All right, 103, here we are. So here we have 103, here are all of our answers. They are in the order, bubbler, water bubbler, drinking fountain, water fountain, other. Okay. Let's look for another one. Mm, 99 we have, let's look at 103. No, sorry, we've already looked at 103. Let's look at 99. So the options here are frontage road, service road, access road, feeder road, gateway. We haven't, but I've never heard of them, never heard of this concept and other. So they are in the choices file exactly the same as they are presented in the, uh, exactly as they are presented on the website, which actually is where I got the answers to the original data cleaning question. So I feel a little validated there but based on the mapping from the question to the answers in the file, this order isn't correct. Because if this order were correct, 
we would see that the most common answer is service road, which it is, and the second most common access is fronted road, which is not on this list. Just quickly look at, uh, and then it was Q99, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then let's quickly look at uh, the original one for question 99. Uh, and I forget what that data set was called, except it was probably selected responses. Hmm. All right, so we have nine answers for this, yeah? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Including NAs. We have no zeros. Okay, so we have nine responses. We have eight classes that those responses could fall into. All right. And then if we look at, let's look at summary. Uh, let's look at a table. So if we look at this, let's get our little key back up. So here are the nine responses that we have. There's no way that this is frontage road. It looks like this is probably, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing the responses here to actually know how I can. I can, uh, just real quick, turn these into percentages if I'm not dyslexic about it. Uh, oh, that can't be right. There's no way those add up to one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it shouldn't be sum. It should be count because these aren't these aren't numbers. These are uh, okay. So I want to count and divide it by the number. I want to divide it by the number of responses and not the uh, its length, isn't it? Uh, and not the sum of responses because that's that's meaningless. All right, there we go. All right. So, looking at this, uh, MUN Grader says, okay, I'm in. Hello. Uh, man says, are you choosing the right data set? Also, are there duplicated records? I think, I think the problem is this. I think it's the mapping. Uh, I'm pretty sure, because this is the second time I've tried to do this with this data set. So, well, this is a different version of the same data set, but um, pretty sure this is where I messed up last time. So. This should be fronted road. This should be service road. Question mark. This should be access road. So the data that we have now is for 47,000 respondents. This data is for 10,000 respondents, which means I feel pretty confident about the big ones. 
about the large classes and less confident about the smaller classes. And the smaller the class is, the less confident I am. Okay. So, it does look like, just looking at these percentages, this looks like it matches with Frontage Road. This looks like it matches with Service Road. This, question mark. This looks like it matches with Axis, matches with access road and then any of these could be any of the others basically because they're so similar to each other um and then i don't know what f would map to if if the percentages hold if it's about 12 percent uh uh Well, oh, also the first one is 2%, not 29%. Oh, yeah. I genuinely don't know what to do next. Because it looks like the order of the responses in the data dictionary does not map to the order of the responses. So what it maps to is that the order of the responses in the original quiz. That's great. What it does not map to is the numeric representation of that answer in the data set. <sighs> All right, let's try it. Let's try another question. Maybe we can get something a little bit more uh, uh, helpful. Uh, man says, I think the third response in your data set at R is adding noise into the data set. The third response in your data set at R is adding more noise. Hmm. I don't mm, entirely know what you mean by that, uh, man, but it could just be because I am tired of the brain. <laughs> wow. All right, let's try another question and see if um, we can make ourselves happier. Okay, so let's just, let's just try question 97, which isn't even... Uh, it isn't even one that we looked at, right? Um, so it's not raw responses. It is, what do we call it? Oh, I think it's just raw responses. So let's just look at question 97. Just a random question, one that I've got up here. And I'm just going to convert it to percentages for my poor eyes. Alrighty. Now, this is helpful. This is helpful. So, looking at this, it looks like one maps to something else, two maps to trash can. B maps to garbage can. Those look pretty close. Uh, four maps to rubbish bin. Pretty rare. D maps to waste paper basket. E and six map to each other. These preferred prefer to different things. And then F is other. All right, all right. I'm less upset. So it looks like, hmm. It looks like the first slot is like NA, 
right? Like one is something else. One is missing. One is did not fill it out. Um, is my guess. Let's look at another one. Let's look at 98, which is, please come. Thank you. All right. Okay. So this looks like it has a pretty wide range. So let's do the same thing. We're going to look at 98 instead of 97. See if my hypothesis is correct. If this is a consistent pattern, then I'm going to be a fairly happy Rachel. Okay. Uh, by accident, that looks about right. On accident or both, these look like in the same area. Neither and other, those look like they're in the same area. And then we got about another, about another 2% um not filled out na okay uh man says could you share the url of the website you're accessing the website might give you results from cash uh i hope so so i'm actually on uh the uh web archive right now because the website has been taken down by the university of minnesota i think yeah and okay says it's just the order of mapping percentages to answers um yeah, the frustrating thing is that the order of the answers of the key is not, it looks like, the actual answers in the data set. Let's try one more. Let's try one more from a different part of the data set. Let's try, what's question three? Bowie knife. Okay. That's another one that looks pretty, pretty good. The Bowie knife is like, I don't know, a type of knife? All right, so we got about 70%, two, about 20%, three, about four, five percent, C, about that one. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, I don't know what a Bowie knife looks like. I know you can throw them, because like Bowie knife throwing is like a thing. I think they sort of look like an army knife, maybe? Mm. Let's find out. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's what I, that's what I saw in my head. I'll pull that up. I'm about to show a knife, FYI. There's the knife. That is, in fact, what I thought it would look like. So that's nice. And then you know, taking the knife away. The knife is gone. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think they've done that thing where they just pick a random number to map NA to, and it's one, uh, which is good. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I think, I think we can do this. I think we can fix this. Whew, which would be great because this has been an enormous thorn in my side. <laughs> um, uh, Robbie says you should consult with Julia Silge. Um, about what? I don't think she's done this. Uh, this particular particular dialect quiz, but no, I I do know Julia. She is fantastic. She uh, is one of the co-authors with uh, David Robinson and. Are they the only co-authors? Tidy text with R, which is a sort of intro to NLP text, an uh, in, intro to NLP package and textbook for R that I would recommend if you're looking for, for getting started. Very, very practical. Mm, actually, I'm gonna add that to a list of things that I have going over here for other reasons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, check out the URL. It's working good. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, so, our thing that we gotta do, because I think it'll automatically, there we are. Okay, so it's definitely gotta be in here. Question ID, field address is equal. So if the data set has minus one, is that gonna work? Let's find out. Okay, give this the old college try. Uh -huh. Okay, something's gone wrong.
what's gone wrong. Okay, so I gotta think about what I'm doing instead of just trying something and then seeing if it works. Um, all right, so we have, we're grabbing the numeric answers out of a question, that's fine. And then we have text answers, choices, filter, yes, select, value, yeah. All right, I think we can just run that bit. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, let's move that down here uh, and give this to be, okay, so I think it's just got to be like the, the, the text, right? Yeah, Q14, let's see what that looks like. All right, let's check out text answers. Yes, okay, okay, all we gotta do, all we gotta do is add at the beginning uh, C, hmm. yeah. Okay, so we got to add at the beginning. Is that going to work? No, it should. It should because we're treating it as a vector, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we're taking another table. Um, NA and then text answers. And you know what? I'm just gonna call this other two. Because we are when our participants do things, we're lumping everything else into other. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay. And hopefully this will solve the problem that I've had for a bajillion years. Oh right, take that out. We don't actually need that minus one. Okay. So because we have treated it as a vector instead of the column of a tibble. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That looks good. Let's look at the head. Please work. Oh, right. <laughs> I was looking at the head of the function. I was like, that's not a data frame. Right, it's not. Have no word, have no word, cabbage night. Never heard, never heard, never heard. Party barn. Yes, yes, yes. Rubbernecking. Yes. That looks good. Soda, soda, soda. Yes, 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 yes. Access service. Access feeder. Yes. Water fountain. Drinking fountain. Yes, yes. Sun shower. No term or expression. Yes. Highway. Yes. Kitty corner. Diagonal. Mm hmm. Pill bug. Potato bug. Sound bug. Roller pulley. Sneaker, 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 sneakers. Crawfish. Crayfish, crawfish, crawfish, crayfish, crawfish, crawfish. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Sub, grinder, sub, hobie, hawk, hobie. <laughs> uh, boy, 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 boy. Same, different, different, same, 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 same. You guys, you guys, you other, other, other. Okay, Um, and then let's just quickly, just for me, because I, uh, what was the, is it, question 118. Um, let's just quickly look at decoded DF and then question 118 and then turn that into a table so we get counts. All right, most people should say they've never heard of such a thing. Most people say they haven't heard of it. Uh, a lot of other people say there's no term for them. And then party barn, other, brew through, bootlegger, beverage barn, beer barn. This looks like a good distribution of answers based on this question. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lynn says, I guess you solved the mapping problem. I think so. I think we've got it. I think we've done it. All right, let me, let me check one more though. Just for, just for me, which is another one that I should know. Was it 99, right? The sun shower one? That's nothing, there we go. 
Oh, that was wrong. But frontage road, service road. Those were the top two, right? That sounds right. Access, no word. Yeah? Let's pull this up. And this was what was 99, right? Cannot type nines for some reason. Frontage and service were the two most common. Frontage and service are the two most common. Yes, yes, yes. This is all looking great. Let's check question 50, which I believe should be the y'all question. All right, most common. You guys, you. Oh, actually, let me, ch let me check the results here as well. And go. All right. Uh, so you guys, most common. Yes. Yes. You, second most common. Yes. Yes. Um, Y'all and you all tied for third should be just about. Yep, yep, yep. Slightly more yallers, which is great. Um, yins, very rare. Yous, very rare. Yuans, very rare. Yes, yes, yes. You lot, very rare. That's a British thing. Yes. I think we've done it. I think that's it. I think we did it. Woo. Okay. Well, that was a lot of staring at things being sad. Um, yeah, let's write it on out. I think we are good to go. And we check the indexing for every question. Yes, it was just the casket one that was wrong. And then uh, checking the answer indexing, something was wrong. The thing that was wrong was that one is actually an A or other, I don't know, it's something else. Um, and I just mapped it to other because that's how we're handling it in the assistant. Whew. All right. So let's call, uh, write out our file. Uh, let's call this write.csv reader. Uh, and then the file is decoded DF and then the path is um, oh, wait, it's got to have a name, right? Um, dialect data cleaned correct.csv. And then just, just because I'm paranoid, <laughs> uh, Yes. Fantastic. Uh, okay, great. I think now if we go back and we uh, retrain our classifier, we will get reasonable answers and not nonsense answers. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear it, but somebody's just like gun in their engine outside. Why? Why do you have to do this? Um, whew. Great. Uh, we've also included... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the slot bug for this one, which we did not previously. Um, we just like didn't include it in the classifier and never used it, even though we collected it from the users. So that's also uh, great. Uh, in any case, that's great. Uh, Vance is such a relief. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, this bit only took what? I honestly, I think this like data encoding has probably been the longest part of this project because uh, we did it once and then we came back and we did it again and still had issues. <sighs> All right. Thank you for joining everybody. I feel very tired, <laughs> uh, but I will see y'all on Friday, the next stream where we're gonna go back and we're gonna retrain our classifier. And that will probably be in Python. Uh, and we might actually, I don't know. I don't know, maybe we'll try something other than XG Boost. Maybe try some sort of like nearest neighbor stuff. We'll see. Um, I'll think about it a little bit. Uh, if you're interested in coming to my talk tomorrow, it's going to be at Women in Machine Learning and Data Science Hyderabad at 8 a.m. Pacific time, so an hour earlier than my stream is usually. Um, also, if you have a chance to fill out the uh, Raza developer survey, that would be fantastic. Uh, we've shared it in a blog post on the Raza blog uh, and on our Twitter. 
um, and on uh, the YouTube community channel and the Raza, Raza channel as well. That would be great. And also, really biggest uh, announcement uh, that I think I've mentioned before, but good to uh, re-up. We have a free, completely online um, doop, uh, conference coming up for people who are interested in building conversational systems. There's going to be some great talks. Uh, I'm going to be on a panel discussion with some other folks, and I'm really excited uh, for that. And it should be a great time. We'd love to have you. Again, completely free, online only, really developer focused. Um, help everybody build better assistance. All right. Thank you. So, oh, and that'll be on June 18th. I don't think I said that with my, with my mouth. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for pointing, joining everybody. Uh, I had a productive time. I don't know that I'd say fun. <laughs> this was a rough one. Uh, but hopefully next week will, next Friday will be a little bit, uh, a little bit better.